Well, this morning I want to start out by telling you a story of something that happened to um, Pastor Mike and I a few years ago in 2011, I believe it was. We were making a drive to go up to Washington, D.C., and we were going through West Virginia on the way. And we decided we would stop as it was starting to become evening and we just wanted to, the sun was out and everything was glorious and it was great. But we thought, man, we need some coffee, some caffeine, it's in October, and, uh, and some snacks. So we stopped at the gas station, or, which was also the convenience store. And Mike continued to, he went to fill up the car and do his thing. And I thought, I'm going on in the store and getting ahead of him. So I get in the coffee line and there was lots of people there out all over the parking lot and inside and I got in the line to get the coffee and got the coffee and he came in and he joined me and we got all of our goods and all packed up and it was just such a wonderful day happening and so much fun and we're excited about our trip. So we come back out the doors and to our shock, carrying our snacks and our coffee, everything had changed. And I mean everything. <laughs> the looks on people's faces um, just was sheer, uh, almost panic. When we walked back out, the sunshine was gone and a dark cloud had just moved in and the wind was blowing at a force like nothing I really had experienced other than being in Florida in hurricanes, okay? It was that sort of thing. But we're in West Virginia, so I'm sure this is not a hurricane and we had heard nothing about anything on the way. No storm, nothing. We were all shocked. We were like, what is happening? And here we're holding coffee and holding everything. And, and trash cans were blowing across the road. Signs were blowing down and off of stuff and whipping around. And people were grabbing their children and trying to take hold of them and get them into their vehicles or into the store. It was just panic and pandemonium happening. And, and Mike and I, we were walking trying to get to our car where it was parked across the parking lot. And it was such a struggle to walk. And hold on to your coffee because I still lose coffee. <laughs> hold it on to this coffee. And, while, and literally, if you didn't keep your balance, I mean, it was like going to take you down. It was that forceful of a northeaster wind that had uh, blowing. Got to the car. I'd spilt m most half the coffee trying to even get to the car. But pulling the do door open was just even hard to pull the door open on the car. Got in the, closed the door and we're like, what in the world just happened? Within 10 minutes, everything changed. Rain began to, it began to pelt and, and, and we, we drove off thinking, okay, let's get out of here. Let's see if we can just get out of what is going on. And we drove and we drove and we drove and we drove. And the rain pelted and pelted and we saw trucks turned over where the wind had just caught them and whipped the freight right off to the side of the road. And, 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 and as we drove for hours, we couldn't seem to get out of it. It just seemed to get darker and darker and fewer and fewer people were on the roads. I think the people that lived around there just went home and, and then maybe other people zipped right to the hotel. But somehow we thought we are going to get out of this, but we didn't. And in, in the night fell and it was so dark. It was like the darkest night we had ever been in. And we began to look and realize there were no lights anywhere. You know, you can look off to the side of the road and you see homes and lights and it looks like a starry night and the, the lights. And there was no stars in the sky. There were no lights of homes. There were no restaurants open. There were no lights from anything. And we realized, oh my goodness, there's been a power outage. And what are we going to do? I began to pray and Okay, God, open up a place for us. Give, a, give us a place to spend the night. We're too tired to keep driving. We weren't able to get out of it. And the Lord, now, now everybody else has gotten off the road. We're like feeling like we're the last ones out there. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, please let there be a room somewhere. Thank you, God, you're gonna provide for us. Lord, you are my provider. I'm just like pulling out the scripture. <laughs> Lord, help us. And I'm, pr I'm praying, I'm praying, God, show us, show us. We're driving along and lo and behold, we look up to the left and we can see a little light in the distance. And we're like, okay, there's a light. Let's get off and see what's over there. We get over there and there is one lone hotel up on a hill with a gas station nearby. And <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mike goes running inside. Pastor Mike goes running inside and he's like, 
gets the last room. He, he gets the room, and I'm seeing other people get out of their cars, go in behind him, you know, trickling behind him. He gets the last room. The guy gives him the last room that there is. And I know you're feeling sorry for the other people. Let me just tell you, I'm a child of the king, and I've got favor, and I prayed my way in, okay? <laughs> I ain't feeling bad about it at all, okay? <laughs> the enemy, they, you know, the other camp's got to go when the Lord is making a way for the, you know, I'm just telling you, I was happy for my room. We went to bed that night, and, you know, and then the mo next morning, we get up, and the sun is shining. It's like it never happened. But I did hear they were without power for like a couple weeks after that. When we came back through, they were still without power. power. But talk about the drama in that moment. And I think about this, it, how darkness can just come so suddenly. If you've lived long enough in here today, let me tell you, you've had some dark things happen. You've had some sudden things come up and cover your life. You've had some times that were so black you can't see the hand in front of your face and you're like, okay, Jesus, where are you? You've had those moments. Maybe it was even last week. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't even know. It could have been. But are you experiencing a power outage? That's my question today. Are you experiencing a power outage? Or, are you, or maybe are you in the dark? Maybe I could ask you that. But are you experiencing a power outage? Are you in the dark spiritually? Maybe you're, in a, you're experiencing a total blackout. And that's what they call those where they just can't see any light. You can be a believer and even feel like that sometimes. And I really felt today, the Lord wanted me to tell that story, but he wanted me to share this, this scripture with you, Isaiah 60. It's a prophetic word from Isaiah, verse 1. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now get this, arise and shine. Can we all say that? Arise and shine. Okay, so let's, let's do it together. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Now, in the context of this is actually talking about the second coming. But I'm telling you, sometimes God highlights something and goes, no, this is what I'm saying now. And I felt in my heart, the Lord wanted me to say these words to you, arise and shine. Arise and shine. His glory is upon you. And even though, and I love this, from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you, rise to a new life. E even though it looks terribly dark, even the darkness maybe has covered your life in situations, maybe it, it, it doesn't look good. And I'm telling you, the Lord is saying, now's the time. When it doesn't look good, when, when you can't see your hand in front of you, it's the time to rise and shine. And we think, no, 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 that's not the time to rise and shine. That's the time to run and hide. You know, find a place to shut the doors. But that's not the way it is with the Lord. He's saying to us to rise and shine. And I feel it prophetically as a church. Now's the time to rise and shine. We don't wait for everything to get better. We don't wait for everything to get worse. Now is the time to arise and shine. If you've received Jesus as your savior, you've experienced the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus is your light. He is the light of the world. He is what he does, and that's what I love about Jesus. He didn't say, I have a light. Here, let me give you a light. He said, I am the light, and he gave us himself. Salvation was when you, know to come, when you come to know Jesus and that light comes on. You can see yourself. You see suddenly who you really are. You see suddenly that he's real and who he is. And now everything begins to make sense. Suddenly you're wide awake. You no longer have to live a life without knowing where you're going. You no longer have to come to the end of your life, not even know why it began. Isaiah 60 is God's word is actually to us today. And God is speaking it to us today and he wants us to apply it to our lives today. So I'm telling you prophetically, arise and shine. 
We don't realize that we can rise up out of our circumstances. We don't realize when it's dark, it's actually the time to rise. We think it's the other way, but no. When it's the darkest, the Lord is saying, that's the time to rise up. The Lord comes into the darkest of situations and times in our lives. And we are to meet him there in that moment. Arise up. Open your eyes. See. Get some perspective to what's going on. It's sometimes, the, it feels as if those times we get hit the hardest, or suddenly or unexpectedly something horrible happens. We suffer some kind of loss. There's some kind of tragedy. And the enemy would love to thank us, but love for us to think this is never going to change. You're always going to feel this way. It's always going to be this way. But we know that he is a liar. He's a liar. And he would love to constrain you and keep you in that position. But we're to have the opposite reaction in the dark places. We're to rise up. That's where we're to shine. And I thought, how are we to rise up? And the Lord just, just highlighted the word praise to me today. And then I love today because today was all about praising the Lord and watching people rise up out of darkness, right? I mean, like we were seeing people like visually, symbolically coming up out of the past. We need to understand that praise is not the caboose that follows the good stuff that happens. Let me say it again. Praise is not the caboose that follows the good stuff that happens. We don't wait till we see something good happen and go, woohoo. I mean, it's good to praise the Lord when something good happens. But praise needs to become the engine that propels and takes us forward into the good. Praise is where we are to start. Now, we've got to rethink we got to change our thinking. Praise is where we start. And when it's darkest, that's when we start the praise. That's when the praise comes. Just like you can hear the train coming. Breakthrough makes a sound. It makes a sound before it arrives. Breakthrough in your life has to make the sound of praise. And some of us just going to have to rise up out of the darkness. Going to have to rise up how we feel. Shake it off and begin to make the sound for things to change in our life. We can't go around long-faced, serious, and down, and depressed all the time. It's not supposed to be. Praise is actually what sets the stage for your miracle. I tell you, God is setting the stage. And I, I'm telling you prophetically, he is setting the stage for what he's about to do in this church and in your individual lives. So if it looks incredibly dark, do not be afraid. God is setting the stage for a miracle. He's setting the stage. The ancient walls of Jericho came crashing down, giving victory to God's people when they shouted the praise. Praise has an effect. It has an effect on you. It has an effect on the enemy. It has an effect on God. Think about it. When you begin to praise the Lord, Something, when you begin to really engage in sincere praise, something happens to you. Suddenly your problems get real small. You can feel a little different about things. If you really engaged in praise today in this church, you're going to walk out of here feeling completely different than the way you came in. Something happens. And I'll tell you, something happens when we praise the Lord to the enemy. Very discouraging for the enemy when you're praising the Lord. Because he's like, how much dark? I've got it so dark around them. I've got it so discouraged around them. And then they, and then they came in here and they praised the Lord and they're, and they're thanking God and they're, and, they're, and they're praising the Lord all week long. And it's so discouraging because I've tried to do everything to make them think that it was never gonna change, that there was no way out for them, that that child was never gonna be saved, that there was no hope for that marriage. And look at them praising the Lord. That is so discouraging for the enemy. Shame on us. <laughs> and it blesses the Lord's heart too. And I'll tell you, God loves it nothing more than when he sees his children standing in faith. <laughs> Stand me up at the gates of hell and I will not back down. I will not back down. I'm going to praise the Lord right there. <laughs> I'm not backing down. Do you know negativity also has the same effect? It has the same, it has, a, it has just as powerful effect. It has the opposite effect, but it has just a pow as powerful that it affects you. Negativity, it's always going to be this way. <sighs> My marriage is just it's horrible. It's just always going to be, it's always going to be terrible. They're never going to change. You know, whoever you're speaking that over, 
You really want to live with that? But, but I mean, you, it has the same, it has, it's just as powerful effect. Just think, to the heights of your praise, will God meet that? I believe he will. But also to the depths of your down, depression and discouragement. Life is going to meet that there. The lack of praise affects you in many ways. It turns the devil loose in your life, actually. It turns the devil loose. And it doesn't bless the Lord, and the Lord cannot bless it. He cannot bless our negativity. God only blesses what expresses and represents Christ. Period. That's it. Praise is actually a command in the Bible. It's not what we do when we feel like it. And we have to get a hold of this, I'm telling you, because we want to praise based on how we feel. But praise is a command. It's not about how I feel. No one wakes up one day and says, gee, I'm just going to choose to be discouraged. At least I hope not. No one wakes up one day and goes, you know, this is it. I want to live a life depressed. Surely no one does that. Surely no one does that. What happens is darkness sort of creeps up over our lives, usually because our mouths are saying things like never, always. It, it, so, so darkness sort of creeps up, because we're speaking judgment against other people. Well, I don't think they ought to be doing that. Well, then, you know, I don't really like that about them. But, you know, you know. And, so, and so negativity sort of just creeps up over, and before we, we don't even realize it. We don't know, we've created a storm in our own lives, and we don't even realize it. And then we got to live with what we created, right? You know, I, want to, I, I need to tell you, and I've, I've told this before, but I, I want to I own this and I want you to know this. There was a time in my life that I worked in, in, a, in this marketing place, and I was one of the artists in there. And I worked with some other artists in the room, and I, made, I was actually probably the main person in there, honestly. I made all decisions. So, so I, that made me the main person. I probably made the most everything, yeah. So, every time I spent my days complaining, I just, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I complained. I was very negative. Every time something came in, and, and it didn't come in early enough to get the job done, I would get frustrated because this meant we are going to have to stay late, and I would immediately start complaining. They didn't even give us, they, they, look, there's typos in this. And they expect, you know, they bring this in here. You know, and me, whatever, I mean, and whatever, I, I just complained, I complained, complained. But the Lord gave me somebody else in the office. And she did the opposite. She just praised God, praised God, praised God. I would go, can you believe this? There is just no way we're going to get it done. She would say, you know, all things are possible. <laughs> to those who love the Lord. <laughs> and at first I thought, you know, I just want to go over there and just, I don't know, maybe hurt this woman. But, <laughs> but, but after a while, as the months go by, I began to catch on. She had something that I did not. And I was bringing in my black cloud into the office, and she was bringing in the Shekinah glory. <laughs> and we was in a competition, and we were colliding in the middle. And finally, I went, you know what? I'm wrong. And this woman is right. So one day, when she did that, to me, she did it to me. <laughs> I went over to her, and I said, you know what? I thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that, because the truth is, I've become very negative, and I didn't realize it, except you kept being such light in the room, and it kept making it obvious to me that it was I who needed to change. So I told her, I want you to keep up what you're doing. Every time something negative comes out of my mouth, I want you to turn that little rain cloud inside out with some praise, and I'm going to catch on. And, I'm gonna, and eventually, I'm going to do what you're doing. And you know what I did? I broke it off. I broke it off. This is what you're supposed to do. Maybe you've got that same little negative thing and you're just speaking things that you ought not be saying. You're repeating the thoughts of the enemy. Maybe you don't realize it, but I'm telling you, if it's not good what you're saying, you're repeating the thoughts of the enemy. Quit saying them. Quit saying them. Make a change. You know, you, you may not can choose to be depressed. It just happens, but you can choose to have joy. Because the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit, is joy. You can actually choose it. So there's no excuse. Now you know tomorrow you're going in with hope into that office. You're going in with joy. You're not going to be the person with the dark cloud raining on everybody else. You're going to bring the sunshine and turn the place around. Amen? Praise is what changes the atmosphere. In John 14, Jesus told his disciples, 
Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. This was not a suggestion. Don't let your hearts be, this was a command. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm telling you today, Jesus is saying to you, don't let your hearts be troubled. I know right now it doesn't look good. I know it feels like it's a blackout. I know it feels like you can't see if God is doing anything in the situation you've been praying about. But the Lord says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. This is a command. And his disciples, though, you have to get the picture. They were about to see Jesus arrested. They were about to see him condemned to death. They were about to see him crucified on the cross. And Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Jesus wanted them to keep an atmosphere of hope and expectancy. Because though it looked like a blackout, the stage was set for the resurrection for the miracle of God. And I feel it in my heart today to understand, you understand the stage is being set. The stage is being set for this church. The stage is, you are the church. The stage is being set in your life for a turnaround, for a breakthrough, for a miracle. Jesus ended the evening also with a promise and I love the promises of the Lord. I'm telling you, I love the promises. But in, in John 16, he said, I told you these things so that in me you might have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. The promise is this, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble. Nobody in here gets out of having trouble. Not one of you. We all get to have trouble. Jesus promises it. <laughs> but we get to choose what we look like when we're going through the trouble. We get to choose not to be depressed. We get to choose to have joy. We get to choose to keep having hope. We get to choose to keep praising the Lord and standing up at the gates of hell and say, this is what God gave me to do. My assignment is to see my husband gets into heaven and I'm going to stand here and praise the Lord because it's going to happen. I'm going to believe it all the way to the wall and I will not back it down. I won't do it. That's the kind of tenacity God's people need to have. I will praise him regardless of what it looks like. Come on, people. We're tena tenacious people. We're a tenacious people. We have come this far and we will not back down. We will have everything. Every promise is mine. I want it all. I don't want to fall short on anything that God has for me. I want to see every one of your children come home and be saved. Be baptized up here. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to back down. Everywhere there's bad news. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Every day there's bad news. Listen, turn on your TV when you get home. Turn it on tomorrow, the next day, CNN. Every day there is bad news. Bad things are happening. So much darkness and things just seem to get darker. So much suffering. We have to be deliberate. We have to be intentional about being positive to counteract the culture. Paul said in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. <laughs> like not once, like twice. I'm telling you, rejoice in the Lord and then do it again. And then do it again and again and again. And he's repeating for a reason. He's making an emphasis here. We are always supposed to be rejoicing in the Lord. Always, always, always. Good times, bad times. Middle times, no times, praise the Lord. Paul lived what he preached. When he was beaten and thrown into the deepest, darkest part of the dungeon, he and Silas broke out in praise. Picture it, it's midnight. They can't see the hand in front of them. They're in a dark situation. It does not look, nothing about this looks good. And what did Paul and Silas do? They began to praise the Lord. And they weren't praising the Lord through gritted teeth. Okay, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this prison. Thank you, Lord, that they beat me and threw stuff at me and hurled horrible comments. Thank you, Jesus. No. <laughs> they didn't grit their teeth. They praised the Lord with sincere hearts because they loved him. 
They loved him in the middle of the darkest situation. And you know what happened, right? Prison doors flew open. And you know, we know they weren't praising to just get the doors open, that they praised the Lord because they loved him. And the reason why we know this is when the doors flew open, they didn't run out. <laughs> they stayed there. I think I would have too. The presence of the Lord was there, obviously. And even the other prisoners who could have fleed in that moment stayed. So it was really genuine praise, and we know that. I believe this, and the Lord wants us to know this today, that praise is the key of breakthroughs. It's the key of turnarounds. It's the key of restorations. It's the key of spiritual awakenings. It's the key for whatever darkness you need victory over, whatever it is you're believing God for. A couple weeks ago, I preached the message uh, on Jesus' words. It said, in Luke 11, keep on seeking, right? Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. And we talked about that because he promises. He says, for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be open. The ask, remember I said you got to be in right standing. you got to forgive others. you got to have the right asking. you got to be asking according to the will of God. Right? And seek. What we do is we seek. We seek to find what is God's word in the situation. Once you know what God wants in the situation, then you're home free. What's God's word in the situation? If, if faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, when God gives you a word through a dream or through a pastor speaking or through whatever, vision, whatever, through something, and you get a word from God, you got faith then for the situation. Well, this is what God said. God said he's going to do this. Okay, I see it's dark. I see it looks really ugly. I see it looks really bad. I understand that. But God gave me this word. He gave me this word. So I can praise the Lord because I got a word. I got a word about what he's going to do about it. And then I take that word and I begin knocking with it, right? And I told you guys to take the word, whatever God, seek for God to give you a word on the situation. When he gives you a word on the situation, then you hang on to it, baby. And I tell you, I went back and got all my old words out. <laughs> and I've been knocking with them. I've been knocking with them since I preached the message. Look, I preach at myself. <laughs> I preached myself. I was like, okay, God, I'm going to knock with these words. And I got out every word that was yet to be answered, that's yet to be received yet and for this church for my own life and I begin to knock with those words and I've been knocking with them because I got a word I know what my daddy wants to do so I'm just knocking with it and reminding him Lord this is what you're going to do but still with that I believe sometimes praise is the key to your door and I think what is praise it's like boasting in the Lord this is who my God is he is so good he loves me he takes care of me. He provides. Let me tell you who my God is. Oh, you got a problem? Yes, I see you there at work, and, you, and you've got this situation. Let me tell you who my God is. I had that problem one time, too, and I took it to the Lord, and it, like, totally changed everything. So let me pray for you. Let me, uh, let me show you how, who my God is. You need to know who my God is. i got to pray. Everywhere you go, tell people who you got. Boast in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Boast in him. Rejoice and be joyful. Make other people jealous of your, who your God is. God is jealous for you. Tell him how good he is. Paul says in Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Now think about this. Shape your worries into prayers. Look, worry's going to come. They're gonna, you, you know, it's, it tries to come. The black cloud tries to come. The difference is when the worry tries to come, I take my worry and I just shape it into a prayer. I, will, I catch myself concerned about something. You know, it's just worry, a nicer word for worry. And then I, then I go, you know what? I just turn that around. Lord, I know you can take care of that person. And God, I just pray that, Lord, you will just, and I just begin to pray a prayer over them. That's our responsibility is believe. Pray a prayer over other people. You see somebody, you see somebody upset, you begin to pray a prayer. You pray over that. And then you praise, you praise. Then thank him for all he's done. God, you got this. You did this for me, you'll do it for them. God praise you and I thank you for the answer. I'm going to ask for the band to come. In Psalms 34.1, David wrote this. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. David, the King David, was a mighty worshiper and a mighty warrior. He had victories because he was a praiser at all times. And we're to praise the Lord at all times. I'm going to ask for you to stand. Lord, we ask that today you will make us a people of praise. 
Deposit something in us, Lord. Even today, this seed, may it take root in the name of Jesus. And may we, may we become truly a people of praise. May we speak positively. We may, may we not judge our brothers and sisters any longer. May we no longer be negative. May we, may we drop the negativity in the name of Jesus. God, give us perspective in our situations that though it is dark out, though it is black and maybe it's getting darker, there's a blackout, maybe there's a power outage in our life. Praise can turn around. Lord, can turn it around. We believe that praise and lifting up your name will turn it around. So Lord, today, deposit this praise in our hearts. In Jesus' name, make us truly a people of praise. We thank you, Lord. Now, we are gonna praise him with all of our heart, soul, and strength. And if you are in a dark place, I ask you to break it off today with praise. Don't leave here the way that you came in, okay? You got an opportunity to praise the Lord.
promised that he'd never leave or forsake us. He promised that he'd be with us every step of this journey and our faith in him. So even when you are in those moments, possibly in despair, possibly in the dark, remember the words that Pastor Darla encouraged us with. Amen. Arise, because Amen. the light of Jesus wants to overwhelm you and bring you into the place where he is. Can you give him thanks again today for this message Amen. that's encouraged our hearts? Amen. Well, we've got some exciting news. But before we do that, I'd like, I'd like for us to do uh, one other thing. Well, I was going to talk about yes, the other thing. Yes, you do that. <laughs> uh, you guys, keep Alan and Whitney in your prayers this week. The Lord has opened a door, and they're flying to Paris, France, where God has given them the opportunity to minister three different times. So this week, God's going to put them on your heart. And I believe yes. that God has called us to cover them in prayer, that you guys will be anointed. And we love you very much. So proud yeah. of you. Yes. Yeah. Stretch your hands toward uh, Whitney and Alan. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray a, a prayer of covering over their lives. We pray for strength physically. We pray for strength spiritually. I pray that you'd give them favor with every person that they come in contact with. I pray, God, that they would truly be the light of Jesus Christ to the people there in Paris. May they be your ambassadors, Father, to help change lives in that local community of believers. We pray, God, that you'd give them safe travel and mercies there and back to the States. We give you the praise and the glory for this opportunity that they would go in the power and the strength and the might of your Holy Spirit. And great things will come out of their ministry times is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, all our legacy folks, during the month of July, there will be no legacy service. Enjoy your month and come back and join Legacy Sunday night, August 6th for the next legacy service. Hey, what a great day we had today. What an outstanding Sunday. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, we had a great Sunday too. It was Father's Day. And I'll give you just a real quick snippet. Over 50 haircuts were given to the men in the four years last week. We gave away 10 prizes, drawings that were giveaways. The primary giveaway was this large red toolbox that was in the central foyer that I'm sure all of you men salivated over. Well, I want to tell you that the winner of that drawing to win the toolbox was Derek Scales. So we want to congratulate Derek and all the other participants in those drawings. We hope that you had a great time. Hey, we want to remind you this new ministry that we just launched a couple months ago, Date Night. It's the third Friday of every month. I want to remind you, you have to register before the deadline of the Tuesday prior to the Friday. So it's coming up. There's child care provided. This the, the whole concept of you being able to go out with your spouse for a few hours and spend quality time. It's an internal ministry. We do a lot of outreaches here, but this is for the people of Winston-Salem first. So keep this in mind. All the information is in your program that you receive as you come to service today. And it's summertime, so it's time for summer camp. So if you have a student in middle school or high school, we want to invite you to register them for Lake Life. So you can register at wsfirst.com forward slash Lake Life. The dates are on the website, lots of great information. And if you don't have a student, but the Lord leads you to scholarship a student, I know that yeah, would be huge because these are life changing weeks. Yeah. We love you and God bless you. Have a great day.